all right good morning guys today we'll be programming the separating station no we'll be programming the separating station for manufacturing system de design lab one right so now we'll be using letter logic and to make this easier to program on for you to follow through i've created a list of instructions on how the station is to be programmed right so now this station works in such a manner that if there's a sensor here that detects if a part has a hole or not so if the part has no hole right it will move to the diverter will be activated pushing it to move to the other conveyor if the part has a hole it will continue to move move straight right so now we'll start programming our station so now if you still remember in our class we discussed certain conditions like and or and not not or not yeah we discussed those conditions like in class so now i hope like they've, they're gonna make this class easier for you to follow through right so now the thing here if the part placement sensor or when the part placement sensor and the start push person activated the conveyor will begin to move so now the part placement sensor it's this sensor here right so it's used to detect the presence of a part or used to confirm if a part is is placed on the conveyor belt and our start button use it to start our machine so now i want us to be aware of this end condition right so now come here and we say when the start push button right which is our p0 p0 we want the conveyor belt one to be activated, which is our q0 right so now we say here q0 and then ledge using q0 so now since this is an end condition we have to put in our i0 here which is our part placement sensor here right so we have to put in i0 so now if you can see our p0 and i0 are connected in series so this is an this is an end condition right so now if our conveyor belt is moved both of both p0 and i0 have to be on and then now we put in our stop button to be able to stop the process right so now we say p1 here which is our stop button and then we run our code right so now we come back here we place a part and then we run it so now you can see our conveyor is moving but there's this thing here or we call it a plunger so now it's blocking our part from progressing moving forward right so now we have to make it retract for our part to continue moving forward so now all right so since we are done with this i want us to highlight it here right to here so now we'll come back to these two statements i want us to move to the plunger right so now they're saying the plunger will be activate the plunge sensor will be activated three seconds three seconds after the part arrives to be able to retract the plunge so now what will happen is that is that our part will come here and then the plunge sensor this sensor here it will be delayed for three seconds before it's activated and then at that point where it's activated the plunger will retract so now we come here and then we insert a new network and then we say our plunge sense which is our i1 right here since they said according to the statement if, since they said three seconds after the part arrives the plunger will be retracted so these three seconds should tell you automatically that there is a timer involved in our letter logic diagram so now we're gonna come to function blocks and then we're gonna create a timer that's gonna delay i3 for three seconds right all right so now we have to declare our timer variable and we have to declare our rs underscore zero right so now we have to declare this right 
and then we have to create we have to delay it for three seconds right so we say t hashtag 3s right and then we cancel this out and then since we'll be only using this one we can just create the output as the plunger which is our plunger is q3 so now we'll make this to q3 right and then i always tell you that you always have to have your stop button to reset the timer so we'll put in our p1 here right and then but then since our p1 it's a since our p1 is a normally closed it's a normally closed push button if we put it in like this it will constantly reset our time so now we have to we have to negate it or convert it into a normally closed so now we negate it and then now since we are done with this all right we highlight it and then they're also saying here the time will be resetted by cb be resetted by CB2 sensor 1. Our CB2 sensor 1, it's this sensor here. So if our part is diverted, which means it doesn't, doesn't, it doesn't have a hole, right? It will be diverted, and then this sensor here will turn on, right? So now this sensor turning on will be used to reset our timer, right? Which is our CB2 sensor 1, which is our i4 right so now we'll put in our i4 here i4 right so now we won't negate we won't negate our i4 because because since our i4 it's a normally open it's a normally open contact it will only reset our time at a point where it detects a part right so now they're also saying they're also saying here they also said here by cb2 sensor one or cb1 end sensor so now our cb1 end sensor it's the sensor here towards the end so if our part if our part it does have a hole it will move to this converse so this sensor here at the end will be used to also reset our time right which is sensor so instead which is sensor cb1 and sensor sensor i2 right but now if we look at the state of our i2 it's always on right so if we put in like this it will be constantly resetting our timer as well so we have to negate it right which means we sorry delete this and then we negate we negate it right so now let's run our code So now if we run our code it will be count for three seconds before the before before the plunger retracts and then if the if the plunger reaches this sensor or this sensor will reset the timer causing our plunger to retract back to its original position, right? So now we go back to our statement so now we are done with this we highlight it to make sure you don't come we don't do like something redundant right so now they're saying when the whole detection sensor is activated right the diverter will be activated for 30 seconds 
the diverter will be activated after three seconds to be able to detect the depth of the workpiece through a non latching time rate. So now they're saying our diverter will be activated through a non latching time. So now our diverter is going to be used to make a decision. So now, for example, let's say if our part does not have a hole, right, a diverter will will actuate causing the part to deflect to the co to go that side. If the part has a hole, it will continue moving straight. So now we'll use that memory to say if if the plunger is activated, right, wanted to divert to that side. So if the like the hole detection sensor is used to make the decision. So now they're saying the hole detection sensor will be delayed for three seconds through a non latching time, right? So now how we do that is that we come here and then we create our timer right so now we insert let's insert so now our whole detection center which is our i3 right so our i3 will be activated through a non latching time right so we declare this variable and then they said here after three seconds right okay so now we come here say t hashtag three seconds right and then we cancel this out and then we say this will create a memory coil which is let's call it m0 right so now we'll use this memo right to be able to activate the diverter or to make our decision but before we have to declare our m0 right so now we're gonna, we gonna use the this memo to activate the the diverter to ensure that decision has been so now if you say m0 right which means if this sensor here if this sensor here detects that the part if if the sensor detects that the part does not have a hole, right? Wanted to divert the part to the other conveyor belt. So now say if M0 then want our diverter, which is our Q Q2, right? Even you can see according to this as I've labeled, diverter is Q2, right? Want our Q2, right? Our Q2 to be activated and uh, now we latch. Right, and then we put in our stop button to be able to stop the process, right? Which is our P1, right? So now we run this. Sorry. So now, if since we put in a timer, we have to build. So now, and then now we run our code, uh, right? So now if we come back here so now if the part you'll observe if the part does not have a hole right so now okay let me correct this So now let's use the part that does not have a hole, right? Because I want you to observe the decision that's going to be made. So we want to use the blue part. So now as you can see, since our, since our part does not have a hole, it's diverted to the other side, right? So now we have to make this thing retract back to its original position, right? So now we come here and then we stop it using this sensor here. So stop the diverter using this sensor here, which is sensor I4, right? So which means we have to come back our code and put in I4 here, right? So now we use I4, but now since our I4 is normally open, our circuit won't work. So we have to convert it into a normally closed by negating it, right? So now our our diverter should when the part reaches this point, this sensor here is, is, 
it gets turned on, our diverter should retract back to its original position, right? So now if we run this, so now you can see our diverter is retracted back to original position, right? So now if we come here again, I want us to follow this, right? which means we also did this so now we highlight this right so now our part is stuck here right so we have to use a center or a particular center which means as you can see now this center is currently on so we can use it to turn on this conveyor belt to move that side right so now come back here and then we say want to use this sensor here which is i4 to turn on this conveyor belt right so now we are dealing with the second conveyor belt so now we come back here and we say we say when sensor I4, right, which is this sensor here, right, which is currently activated, right. We want our conveyor belt to move. So we want our conveyor belt 2 to move, which is our conveyor belt 2, it's our Q4, right. We want our Q4 to move. Q4, right. And then now we latch, right, using, uh, using your Q4, right. And then now we put in our stop button, right which is our which is our p1 right and then now we run this you are lo lo log in with download and then we play right So now if we start again, put in the part, this one, and then we press start, right? So, okay. So now it counts. So now let's just correct the sensor problem, right? So now let's try again, right? And now press stop and then we load in a part and then it moves. So now, as you can see, when the sensor is activated, the part goes towards the end, right? So now we can see our parts have been separated properly because you see if the part now does have a hole let's just remove this so now if our part does have a hole right like this part here right it will go straight instead of being deflected to the other side so now it will detect and then it will move straight so now as you can see our system we're programming to separate the parts properly right so now if we go back here what is so now so now we 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 have used the cb1 center to activate our conveyor belt and then now they're saying our conveyor belt to deactivate two seconds by time right and then they tell us that summer is the same time that that's going to deactivate conveyor belt one here right so now we want to create a timer right for the CB1 end sensor, right? So you're gonna say if I2, our I2, come back here, our I2, it's our end sensor, right? It's either we're gonna use, so now we're gonna use either our end, 
So now if we go back to So now wait before we go back to, before we go there right I want us to look at this so if they're saying if if their part does not have a hole you know that the the part will divert as a result of the divert and then they're saying the CB2 sensor this sensor here this sensor here when it becomes activated meaning the part is diverted to the second conveyor belt you want this conveyor belt to stop because if the part diverts here and begins to move in that direction, there's no need for this conveyor belt to keep running. So we have to stop it. So now we stop it here, right? Using our I4, right here. Using sensor I4, right? But now, since our I4, since our I4, it's since our I4 is in a state whereby it is a normally open. We have to negate it to convert it to a normally closed, right? So now coming back to the time, all right? So one a time that's gonna be used to stop this conveyor or this conveyor, all right? So now let's first. So now the timer we're gonna be using the same time, all right? But I want us to utilize the all conditions, right? So now I'm gonna start here by coming here right and then let's just create it here under this one right so now i'm gonna create a timer that's gonna stop that's gonna stop the conveyor belt right so now what can we use so now if we go back here right so now if the path continues to go straight right towards the end we'd like to use this sensor here to stop the to stop the conveyor belt but only after two seconds right so we'll begin by using i2 right so we come here and then we say i2 right we want to create a time So now we have to declare this as turn two, and then this as rs underscore one, right? We have to declare this, and they said after two seconds, right? T hashtag two s, right? And then we cancel this out, and then. You wanna create an output that is a memoir, right? So now, since we we already taken M zero, we're gonna use M one as the memory for this timer, right? So now we also use our P one to reset as always, right? So now we also have to negate it. Probably know the reason why by now. So now, but then since we wanna use this timer right since our i2 it's always on right which means our timer will be always engaged so now or if our i2 as you can see our i2 it's a no it's always normally it's it's normally closed which means it's always on right so now we have to make it in such a way that it doesn't always trigger the count the timer to count so now we have to negate this right sorry we have to negate I2, right, to ensure that it only it only triggers the timer when a part passes through, right. So now we use it to stop the first conveyor belt here using M1 here, right. So use M1, right. And then since this timer it's always gonna be on right or it's we've converted it into a normal close we also have to negate m1 here all right to ensure that the current passes through so now they said coming back here they said this timer 
This time I will be resetted by the stop button or the part placement center. Right. So now our part placement center is going to become on only on when we put in a part. So now you're going to use it to reset our to reset our time, right? Which is our eyes here. Right. So now we have fulfilled the statement of the sensor here. Right. We fulfilled this. Right. So now they're saying when CB2 sensor 1 is activated, right, the conveyor belt will be, de will be used to deactivate after two seconds, which is similar to conveyor belt 1, right, but now we'll be using a di different input. So now this, if we put it, if we're doing this here, right, we can use a, a all condition. So if this all, so we insert parallel below, right, and we use sensor this sensor here, right? Sensor I5, this sensor here towards the end to stop the conveyor after two seconds, right? So use, also come here to use I5, right? But then since our I5 is always on as well, right? We have to negate it. We have to negate it to ensure that it only becomes activated when the current passes through. And then now we have to put this to stop the second conveyor belt by putting the M1 also here. M1 as a negated contact rate. And then now if we run this, login, download. Right. So now if we log in with download and we, okay, Sorry, before, since we've installed a new timer, right, we also have to build, right? And then we build again, and then we log in now. So now if we log in, our station should be working as it should now, because we have fulfilled the instructions here, all of them. So now, if we run our station, we'll be run it using bo for both the... Uh, with the part with the without the hole and the part with the hole and you'll see how it is. So now as you can see it makes a decision. So Santa we don't know for the fact that because So now Okay, let's adjust our sensors to make sure that they are operating in the optimal way. So now, if you look at this, right? So now if we start, should count and then make our plunger retract and then go back, as you can see. So now, if we're using a part with the hole, right? If we press start, should detect that a part has a hole and then it should continue moving straight, right? So this is how you program the separating station for your lab one, right? So yeah, thank you guys for giving me the chance to explain the station.